Hey Siri, what time is it? Hey old head, it's time for 30 years ago this month. That's right, 30 years ago this month, and we are in this month. Today is the first, if you're watching this the day this video came out, May 1st, 2023, which means that we are talking about 30 years ago in May of 1993. As usual, going through all the interesting shit or shit that I would like to talk about that happened 30 years ago in this month. Let's fucking do it. Once again, 1993 so far, not a very interesting year for music news. So let's move over to the music charts. First, we start off with what were the number one albums in May of 1993. Now, in the first week of May 1993, same old shit from last month and even fucking the month before, the number one album in America was the Bodyguard soundtrack driven by the massive success of all of the hit singles from Whitney Houston. But okay, we get it. You've had your time. You've had a lot more time than you need. Everybody has the album by now, right? All right, let's move on to the second week of May 1993. The number one album for the second week of May 1993 was Aerosmith, Get a Grip. Back when a band of old fucks could have a fucking number one album in the country. Remember those days? And then for the rest of the month of May 1993, I can't, I can't, I can't even say its name. Like seriously, like. At this point, I think what happened was that everybody had their CDs and those like old cases that get all, and they get all scratched up and now everyone's having to buy another copy of it because they keep sliding it in and out of the case. That's the only explanation, Je Jesus. But now we're moving on to everybody's favorite segment in the entire episode. The Hot 10. That's right, the Hot 10. The 10 most popular songs at the beginning of this particular month in 1993, according to the Hot 100. We're doing the top 10 of the Hot 100, which means the most popular songs across the board, which means a lot of times no, no rock and roll in sight. Not much has changed, really. But um, last time on the last episode, I got a comment from somebody uh, telling me that I needed to stop all the singing. And so, unfortunately, everybody, on this episode, there's going to be more, more singing. singing. All right, coming in at number 10, a personal 90s favorite of mine, it's Paperboy. Not, not Paperboy B-O-I from the hit show Atlanta. Great show, by the way. No, it's Paperboy, all one word, B-O-Y, with do the ditty if you want to, because then I can see if I want you. Love that one. Number nine, fucking PM Dawn with I hope you look at me through patient eyes. Looking through patient eyes is the name of that song. Coming in at number eight, we have the Spin Doctors with If you want to call me baby, just go ahead now. And if you would like to tell me maybe, just go ahead now. Uh, Two Princes is the name of that song. That's one of those songs that I'm just like, that was in 1993? Like that, for some reason, that just makes me feel like it's 91 or something, but okay, 93. And number seven, SWV Sisters with Voices with I'm So Into You. Number six, Jade, Don't Walk Away, Boy. Number five, Vanessa Williams slash Brian McKnight with Love Is from Beverly Hills 90210. Okay. Number four, we have Whitney Houston with I Have Nothing, and just like last time, I also have nothing. Number three, Dr. Dre, nothing but a G thing, baby. Number two, unfortunately, slipped from the number one spot down to number two, but we still love him here at 30 years ago this month. It's Snow with In Farmer. You know, so that I can, you know, I, I, I know the lyrics, but it doesn't, how does it, it doesn't come out of my mouth the, the right way, and it just becomes complete gibberish. I lick it, boom, boom, down. And at number one, moved up the charts from last time. It's Silk with, cause tonight, baby, I wanna get freaky with you. Freak me is the name of that song. It's confusing how it's like, freak you, freak me. Who's, who's freaking who here? All right, moving on to the movie box office. The hit movies of May, 1993. For the first week, the number one movie in America was Indecent Proposal. We talked about this one last time. Demi Moore, Woody Harrelson, Robert Redford, don't remember much about it. 
this is one of those interesting months where not only were there five weeks where there were like big weekend openings in the month, but also it's five different movies each time. The second week in May, the number one movie in America was Dragon, the Bruce Lee story. Now, I had not thought about that movie in 30 years because I recall going to see it in the theater and I never thought about it again. For the third week of May, I actually had to fucking look this up because I was like, what the fuck is this movie? Dave, which apparently is a movie starring Kevin Klein and Sigourney Weaver. And I guess people liked it. I remember nothing about it. I don't think I ever saw it. And for the fourth week, the number one movie in America was Sliver, starring Sharon Stone and one of the Baldwins. It's not Alec, one of the other ones. And this is another one of those movies. I talked about it last month with Indecent Proposal. Like Around this time in the 90s, it was like, you're an adult, you need movies about sex, here you go. And that this was another one of those movies where Sharon Stone was like the sex movie lady. And I mean, I, I, this was one that I actually saw and I remember just being very boring. But, you know, I was also 15, 16. How old, how old was I then? Old enough to know the logistics of sex, even though I had not had sex yet. There's a scene in that movie where, like, the Baldwin guy throws Sharon Stone up against, like, a wall or something and just pulls down her panties and starts, like, doing her. And, I, and, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, the angle that that is occurring in, he, he's doing her in the butt. Now, I haven't watched that scene in 30 years, but I I'm still sticking to that. I, I've st I think that I knew what I was looking at back 30 years ago. But you tell me, was there, was there butt sex in Sliver? I think so. And for the fifth week of May, the number one movie in America, one that has no butt sex in it whatsoever. But I saw this movie in the theater. I've seen it many times since. I fucking love this movie. Cliffhanger, starring Sylvester Stallone. I guess, arguably, like his last big movie, I think after this, he did other movies and the, you know, his star kind of went, you know, people still love, I mean, I still love Sylvester Stallone, but, but I can't think of another movie that came out after Cliffhanger that was a big deal. Was Demolition Man after Cliffhanger? That was a big deal. Not that great of a movie, but that's for another year. All right, moving on to the albums released in 19... All right, moving on to the albums released in May of 1993 that I feel like talking about. There's really no action up until the 18th of May, and that saw the release of Kiss Alive 3, which is pretty good live album. If you're into, I mean, it's got it's got stuff off of Revenge. It was recorded on the tour for the album Revenge. There's a couple 80s songs in there, three, four, maybe, but then there's some old standards in there as well, and it's the non-makeup era of Kiss. But, uh, I mean, it's got Bruce Kulick on guitar. That dude fucking ruled. That, 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 that version of the band, pretty damn good. And Kiss Alive 3 is a pretty damn good album. Moving on to the 25th of May, a big day for 15-year-old Steven because this album came out, The Sound of White Noise by Anthrax. So I got into Anthrax around the time Persistence of Time came out, and I became a really big fan. And then, you know, they brought out Attack the Killer Bees, and then all of a sudden... You know, I see on MTV, oh, Joey Belladonna is out, and this new guy, John Bush, is in. And I remember, like, on Headbangers Ball, there was early footage of John Bush singing Joey Belladonna songs, and I was just like, oh, no. It, I, I've never been a fan of him singing Joey songs, the, the, the vice versa. Not a fan of that either. But I was still very interested... Like, what is this going to be like? Is this going to be any good? And then the video for the song only came out and I was just like, holy fuck, okay, okay, I I'm, I'm with this. And then on the day it came out, I didn't buy this, I bought it on CD when it came out and I was so surprised at how good the album was. And it was an early taste of me getting an album that sounded a little bit different and I really enjoyed the fact that it was something different from this band that I loved. You can hear me talk at length about this and all the other Anthrax albums on the Anthrax Cranked and Ranked episodes, so go check those out, uh, but let's move on. Also on May 25th, another one of my favorite metal albums of all time was released, Odium by Morgoth. I think I did a, a Vinyl Thoughts episode on this album three years ago when I was still at my old apartment and I was still doing Vinyl Thoughts. Um, I did an entire video just talking about this particular album because I absolutely love it. It's the second full-length Morgoth album, 
and the first in a trio of them giving you something different every time. And I fucking love that. But this one, they, they nailed it because it's so hard to pin down where this fits. There's a little bit of death metal in there. There's a little bit of progressive elements in there. But I just, I love the feel and the vibe of this album. And it, it's just, it's just fucking killer. Do yourself a favor. If you don't know this album, go check it out. It is fantastic, Morgoth. Odium. The last album for May 25th I'm gonna talk about is uh, very lesser known, and it's a hip hop album, so I apologize for you people that come here just for the metal. But um, you're also stupid. Van, full of Pakistans. This is a hip hop group from Atlanta, Georgia, and this is their first and only album, I believe. And as I say very often when I talk about 90s hip hop, there is something about this sort of alternative, fun, just adventurous hip hop that, that a lot of groups were doing. And this is one that it's not too different from a lot of other groups. And so I could, I guess I can see why it, people don't talk about it all the time. But if you're into that sound, this album is fucking great. It's got all of that 90s energy you want. And, you know, it's one of those things where it's just like, what, I don't know what happened to these guys, but um, this album's great. Y'all so stupid, van full of Pakistans. All right, moving on to May 31st, which mathematically doesn't make much sense because albums were released on Tuesdays back then, and this would mean it came out on a Monday, but these are both on an, an independent label, so I guess they can release shit whenever they want. But I double-checked it, and I couldn't find anything that said otherwise. Both of these albums released on the same day on the same label on May 31st, 1993. First off, No Use for a Name, The Daily Grind, the first No Use for a Name album on Fat Records. I've seen this classified as an EP at times because it's eight tracks, like 22 minutes, but it's fuck, it's fucking great. The great 90s punk rock energy, rest in peace, Tony Sly. Uh, yeah, No Use for a Name. But also, last, but absolutely not least released also on Fat Records on May 31st, 1993. Propagandi, How to Clean Everything, the debut album from the Canadian punk, skate punk, metal, amazing fucking band. And uh, there you go, there's the dudes there. Um, that, that, he went on to be in the weaker thans. Um, anyway, so yeah, I, this album came out and I just remember it being part of the soundtrack to my high school experience. Like something about this album spoke to me so much because it's it's political, it's social, it's foul-mouthed, it's fast, there's riffs. It's just one of those albums that at the time I'm like, this is, the, I, I, lo I live for this kind of shit where it's just brash and bold and has something to say and it's kind of obnoxious to some people that don't like this kind of music. But man, I, I love and cherish this album and every album that Propagandi have ever done. So there you go, how to clean everything. I feel like I've been talking really, really fast, but maybe it wasn't that fast, you tell me. Anyway, I haven't done any cocaine at all. But that brings us to the end of May 1993 for 30 years ago this month. I hope you enjoyed it. If you don't appreciate my singing during the Hot 10, please send me an email at oldheadpodcast at gmail.com so I can reply and tell you to fuck right off. All right, guys, that's all I got. Thank you for watching, and I will see you all again next month.